everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and one of the fun things about running this channel is that I get a lot of emails from people asking me to try out some cool stuff, and I got about 10 emails in the last day and a half on this thing. This is called the Kangaroo. It is a $99 Windows 10 PC, and I wouldn't have known about this had not all these people wrote in, so I really appreciate you all doing that. Keep those suggestions coming because uh, this is a really cool little product to check out. Now, this is a full Windows 10 computer with an Intel chip, Again, for 99 bucks, so you buy this, uh, plug it into a cheap television, get a keyboard and mouse, and you've got yourself a desktop computer that can run Microsoft Word, can browse the web, do email, uh, pretty much a lot of what most people do with a computer, uh, you'll be able to do with this, even play some games and whatnot too. So a tremendous value, uh, almost too good to be true, but it is true, I've been playing with it, and I can tell you that this thing works pretty well, we're gonna take a look at how it runs in a second. Uh, Adam uh, Cherry Trail Processor, this is the newer Atom chip, a Z8500, so it is slightly faster, on paper at least, uh, than the uh, Mego Pad as well as the Transmart Cherry Trail PCs we looked at a couple of weeks ago. So this is slightly faster on the benchmarks. Uh, in uh, real use, when you're actually using it, you may not notice the difference, but it does have a slightly faster processor on its bursting side than those two PCs did. Uh, two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. So it's fo following that same uh, kind of pattern for RAM and storage. However, this uh, has about 20 gigabytes free when you get it up and running, like 19 and a half or 20 gigs or so. Uh, that's because the installation of Windows on here is very generic. They didn't put any junk on here, so it's not loaded up with a bunch of stuff you don't want, uh, just the stuff you need. So that was really nice to see. Now you'll notice this comes in two parts, and I'll show you how this uh, thing comes together here in a second. Now your uh, purchase price gets both the computer and the little dock here. Uh, the dock is where you have your HDMI port for plugging it into a display, uh, two USB ports, one USB 3, which is the faster standard, as well as USB 2.0, and you plug the power cable in there. Now this will actually work without the dock connected because there's a battery uh, inside the computer that they say will run for about four hours. So if you're not doing anything uh, extravagant with this, I would imagine you'll get that battery life. If you're trying to do some heavy duty processing or running a game or video editing or something with it, uh, you're not going to see four hours, but you'll certainly uh, be able to survive a power glitch or something like that. So that's a neat little feature there. Now there's no way to get display connected when the dock is disconnected at the moment, uh, but they have a feature where you can plug in an iPad uh, via the USB port here. This is a micro USB port but you can get an adapter to make it into a full USB cable. Uh, you get out your lightning cable here that you would normally plug into your iPad, download an app for both devices, and you can use your iPad as a monitor with it. They have a piece of software that works with this to do that, so that's neat. You'll see that in a minute too. Uh, so kind of an interesting concept here, and I guess what their plan is is that they're going to uh, come up with additional docks to make this kind of an expandable system. I don't know what else you would plug into it, uh, but they are planning to do that, and they didn't get back to me when I asked them what kind of docks they had planned, uh, but I guess they're going to do something where you can plug in additional things and get additional functionality added onto it. So that was kind of an interesting approach to it. On this side, there is a action button, which I have no idea what it does. The manufacturer's uh, manual and their website has nothing really about what this is about. So we're going to have to wait and see. Maybe there's a feature to come that they haven't uh, gotten uh, working just yet. So we'll keep an eye on what that does. Right now, if you flick the switch, it turns blue. So that, that's something. Uh, there is, though, a fingerprint reader on here that works very well. And this works with Windows Hello, which is the new authentication standard in Windows 10 that will allow you to uh, log in with your biometrics, so your fingerprint here. Uh, you just put your finger on there. You'll see this in a second. It'll let you right into Windows, and you're off and going there. And of course, you got the power switch there. So really interesting design here overall. I don't think there's anything behind this little piece of plastic here. This might just be some uh, ventilation. I couldn't uh, find any way to get that off of there. So I don't see a headphone jack on here, uh, but you really don't need one. It'll output the audio uh, through the HDMI. So now what we're going to do is uh, get this thing powered up and see how it performs. And we'll start with that fingerprint check. So let's take a look. All right, we are booted up here, so let's try to log in with our fingerprint now and see how it works. So there we go, and no notice that it's me. Now the fingerprint reader is a little bit glitchy at the moment. It works great when you first boot up the computer, but if you log out and try to log back in without rebooting, it doesn't even recognize the fingerprint reader is there. You can try to force a fingerprint read. There's a little thing you can click to uh, ask for it to detect a finger. When you push the finger on there, it doesn't see your finger or anything for that matter uh, at all. So it's, it's, it's probably some driver issues they have to work out. Now when you do get this thing booted up, you've got yourself a Windows desktop Desktop. You can install Windows software on here. I've got an older version of Microsoft Word, so if you have an old PC kicking around and you still have that Word license, you can 
uh, install that version on here. As you can see, things do uh, flow very nicely. You can make changes to the document here and uh, it's very responsive. So it's really good for the kinds of things that a lot of people buy computers for. And again, you can get a nice desktop computer here for a hundred bucks, which is a very good deal. Uh, you can browse the web too. So we'll go visit my YouTube channel real quick here and we can get a feel for uh, how fast it can render websites and do some web video at the same time. So I will hit up uh, my YouTube channel and I have an autoplay video here right at the start. So we'll wait for everything to render in and there you go. We've got video up, up and running. Uh, this does output at 1080p. It can go up to a 4K display if you want. Uh, and the 1080p video on YouTube here uh, appears to be running just fine without a lot of lag or at all actually. It looks like we're not getting any drop frames and very smooth uh, playback on here too. So very nice web experience. It does get a little bit bogged down when uh, you've got a site with a lot of ads running. So the New York Times lately has been really killing my uh, low end PC. So there might be occasionally moments where it's gonna be a little bit slow when those sites first load, but uh, after those ads come up and all the script stops running, uh, you're back in business. And on the Octane benchmark test, we got a score of 8,085, and that actually makes it a little bit faster on paper at least uh, than the Mego Pad and the Transmart PC that we looked at, uh, both of which were running with those Cherry Trail processors. This one's a little bit faster. It can burst a little bit better uh, in certain circumstances, and a test like the Octane uh, test will really kind of show those differences. So you, again, you're not gonna really notice it when you're using it, uh, but on paper, it is a little bit quicker. So we're gonna take a look now at how that iPad functionality works. We're gonna plug my iPad uh, into our uh, Kangaroo PC and see how we can use it as a secondary display. So the way this iPad monitor thing works is you have to go out and grab some software from the Kangaroo website called OS Links, L-I-N-X, and they also have a client application that you're gonna find in the iPad App Store. This only works on the iPad at the moment, so there's no Android compatibility uh, with what you're about to see here. And then all you do is load the app up on the iPad. It will stay uh, running resonant in memory on the Kangaroo when you have it installed. And once it detects an iPad connected via uh, a lightning cable, the same one you would normally charge your iPad with, uh, what'll happen is it will become a monitor and Windows will think it's a monitor actually and, act, and pull up the, uh, the same uh, display settings thing you might be accustomed to already. So we have uh, down here, the little one here represents my iPad and the two here is our uh, main display. So I can grab uh, this Microsoft Word document here and just move it down here if I wanted to because it really thinks it's another monitor. Uh, touch controls also work on here too. So you can use your uh, finger like a mouse if you want to do something like that. Uh, there's a little bit of latency involved with it. Not bad, but uh, you're not going to want to do some games on here, but it's certainly just fine for uh, using this as a secondary display as you're uh, working on a document that you need a little bit more room for. So that works really, really Really well. Now this is cool, but there is actually stuff out there uh, for any PC or Mac that you can download to do the same thing. The one that I use a lot is called Duet, and it works identically to this. I use it on my Mac all the time, and I believe there's also a Windows version available. So while it's neat that they have their own application to do this, uh, there is another one out there that you can use on your computer right now to get a secondary display. So you're not gonna be playing games on here, but you can play games uh, on the regular monitor plugged in via HDMI. So we're gonna check out Minecraft next. So Minecraft runs pretty well on here. We're seeing frame rates between 20 and 40 frames per second. You might see a little bit of weirdness going on when we get above 30 frames per second, and that is because uh, my video system only processes video at 30 frames per second, so you get a little bit of clipping uh, when you go beyond the 30. Uh, but it does look to be running pretty well on here, and I think if you have a kid at home and you want a cheap computer to let them play Minecraft on without interfering with what you're doing on your computer, uh, this might be the way to go. Uh, it will certainly play the game quite well. This is the Java-based version of Minecraft, uh, which will run a little bit slower than uh, the Windows 10 edition, which is also out now, but most people are still running with this Java version. I do have the Optifine plugin, which makes it run a little bit faster on lower end PCs like this. I got one more game to show you though. We're gonna take a look over at uh, Counter-Strike Go and see how that functions. So here's Counter-Strike Go running at uh, 1080. I did turn down a lot of the settings to try to uh, reduce the graphical quality to improve the frame rate, but we're still not gonna see a really good frame rate at 1080 unless you really uh, reduce the image quality. My suggestion would be to run uh, this game at 720p, adjust some settings to uh, get it perfect, and I think you'll get a good frame rate out of there. So you can run games like Counter-Strike that have been around for a while. Uh, newer stuff will not run as well, of course, if at all. So like Grand Theft Auto V and those uh, kind of games are out of the question. Although you can use this as a way to stream from uh, an Xbox One in your house if you wanted to do something like that. On the CloudGate test that we run with the 3 d Mark benchmark package, we get a score of 1,766. 
Uh, so not very playable when you look at a benchmark kind of uh, geared against modern games, but uh, it does slightly better than the other two X5 Atom-based machines that we looked at. So again, on paper, uh, this is looking a little bit better than those do, uh, but it's still not going to be good enough to run, uh, again, those modern games that you might run on a higher-end gaming PC. Now, I'm not going to recommend this, though, for home theater enthusiasts. It does uh, do fine with Kodi and running these uh, Blu-ray MKVs that we usually test here on the channel. This is a full Blu-ray file streaming up uh, from the basement NAS over AC Wireless. So it does play the movies just fine, but it doesn't handle uh, the digital audio pass-through as well. It does work uh, with Dolby Digital and DTS. I noticed some dropouts occasionally, so it was acting a little, a little flaky on me. It could have just been uh, the, the nature of the connection I had, but it definitely doesn't work with... Uh, the Dolby True HD or the DTS HD formats, which are those higher end lossless formats that a lot of home theater people are looking for. So it won't do too well, well with those, but uh, you know, casual movie use and certainly things you get off of Netflix or uh, the Google Play Store should work fine. And I do believe the Dolby Digital pass-through will work on those, uh, just not the higher end formats. So that is the Kangaroo Mini PC. This is an exceptional value at $99. I don't think you're gonna find anything close to this price point uh, out there at the moment for a fully functional Windows desktop computer with an Intel processor. Uh, there are things like what we've looked at before from Transmart and uh, Mego Pad, but those cost anywhere from $30 to $50 more than this. Uh, and you get pretty much the same functionality, maybe a little bit better on some benchmarks uh, than you saw out of those computers. So I'm gonna recommend this one for uh, casual computer users. Great as another PC in the house if you don't wanna break the bank. Uh, get your old TV out, get a keyboard and mouse, and you are good to go with a full desktop computer uh, at your disposal. Not gonna be great for home theater enthusiasts or other people that want higher end hardware, but uh, for just about everyone looking for something casual and uh, good enough, uh, this is by far good enough and you can't beat the price. This is Lon Seidman, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.